Hey guys, today I want to talk about the future of legacy and I'm going to talk about the 32 brainstorms and GP, the last legacy GP, which was in Japan. A lot of people will probably leave a comment saying that it is because they are Asian, they are going to play more brainstorms. I feel that comment is not really true. I feel like in any legacy event, maybe you don't get 32 brainstorms in top eight, but you get quite a bit. And even outside the top eight, you get a tremendous amount of people playing Brainstorm in those type of decks. Uh, the reason I want to make this video today is I want to talk about Legacy's impact, um, Legacy's financial impact. Uh, legacy prices have not changed very much. If you look at graphs of like just general Legacy versus general modern or EDH staples or standard staples, you can see that the percentage and price change, I know that legacy cards are more expensive, so when it's easier for underground C to go up $10 than it is for a, uh, a Dragon Lord of some type. Because a Dragon Lord, if it goes up $10, it may, may have doubled or have at least gone up 50%, but for a legacy staple to go up $10, that's like <laughs> underground C, it's a very tiny percentage. So when I'm talking about this video, I'm talking about percentage of growth. The reason that I cannot really, I'm not buying any more legacy staples, um, it's not counterfeits. So counterfeits, I don't even make videos about that anymore. It's so not worth me making a video about. Uh, if you feel like I should make a video about counterfeits, you can leave a comment below. But in my opinion, counterfeits are counterfeits. I mean, they will come close to the real cards, but never ever mimic it. Or if it does mimic it, you want to know the difference. And so that is, I guess, a consideration if you are going to buy legacy cards, is to see what's going on with that and getting information about that. I just don't necessarily feel like I should be the one providing that to you. So yeah, that aside, that's a very important aside, but putting that aside, legacy is a format that is unable to change or evolve. And the reason that is the case is if Wizard of the Coast were to print a very good card a super fantastic, very powerful card, that card would have to exist in standard, right? If it was a new card. I'm not talking about reprint, which Wizard of the Coast, that's a totally another issue. Wizards of the Coast doesn't even like reprinting Legacy staples um, outside of the Judge, but like the Judge promos, how many of those exist? Not that many. And it actually inflates it because they're foil and they're actually more expensive than the regular non-foil editions. So Legacy is this format that is unable, Wizards of the Coast, even if they wanted to change it, would have a difficult time changing it. Because if they were to reprint new cards, they have two avenues essentially. Commander decks, which once in a blue moon you get a true name nemesis or a scavenging ooze. I mean, that, that's it. Like I don't feel like, oh, Flusterstorm is pretty good. But there's not that many of them. Um, and that's not the point of the commander deck, it's not the point of the commander deck is to shake up legacy. Now when you look at a Tassiger or a Delve or uh, all these cards that were strong enough in legacy, you typically don't get that because what you're saying is if it's good enough in legacy, it's good enough in modern, and it's really really good in standard. Unless it's like a Delve mechanism where you don't have the support that you would need. Wizard of the Coast does does not want to print legacy powered cards in standard because it would warp the standard format and everyone would want to play those cards or when I mean does not want to print I mean the intentionally tries not to print cards that are in standard that are good in and not in modern modern standard are about the same because they want the value to be from standard into modern but they don't want the value to be standard into legacy and why is that? There's a simple financial reason. Wizard of the Coast makes very little money from Legacy. I'm sure someone in the comments will say, no, Wizard of the Coast makes a ton of money from Legacy. Um, I don't see it. Like, I don't see it. Wizard of the Coast makes most of its money from manufacturing product, like booster packs and booster boxes and fat packs, and then promoting it. Uh, that's why Legacy GPs have died down. There's not that many of them. And even more so, Star City Games 
the people who have the most legacy cards or who used to have the most legacy cards check their supply. Something is very interesting is happening and you know it, it's worth looking at the biggest store, uh, Magic Online store, and seeing what they want to do. And they've decided, you know, we had Legacy Day. We are not going to have Legacy Day every single weekend. And that's our decision. And Star City Games is a company run to make money. Why did they decide that? And there has not been any, there's not been considerable backlash. So the decision was correct. I believe their attendance is up on modern days. I believe that in the future, in the next year from now, there will be even less legacy events at Star City Games and there will be even less legacy events for um, Magic in general, GPs and uh, I know the locals in my area, uh, in Houston, there's maybe one store who does legacy events often, but the turnout of a legacy event just because people don't have the cards or people are not willing to spend money in the cards is tiny, tiny, tiny compared to standard and draft. Uh, standard and draft will always be the thing that keeps a lights stores on. It will always be the reason that Magic is making money and profitable every year. So when you look at it, I have to say that Legacy is really not in a good position. And I made a video on my old channel a long time ago saying this is exactly what would happen. Star City Games would drop Legacy. Um, they haven't done that yet, but in the future they, they could if they wanted to. And I think the data supports that they wouldn't suffer that much. And when you look at it, it, it just makes me uh, it makes me very sad. But at the same time, I'm not going to buy any more legacy staples. I just won't. I and a lot of people say, why don't you talk about legacy in this channel? I, I'll talk about EDH cards that are played in legacy, but I'm not going to talk about legacy because legacy itself, to me personally, I don't have an interest in it anymore. And this is someone who love love legacy. If you watch my old channel, every single deck tech was legacy this, legacy that. And I had my collection was entirely in Legacy um, at that point. Like so many Force of Wills, pages of Force of Wills, uh, pages of uh, moats, and all these really amazingly, ridiculously expensive cards, which were less expensive back then. Um, pages of uh, Underground Seeds, but now I just use them for my EDHs. I don't really consider them Legacy staples. I just consider them EDH staples, and my mindset has changed from getting a playset of these cards to getting one or two for my EDA stacks. Uh, Legacy is too expensive. The reserve list, which is another topic, will kill it. I truly believe that's the main problem. And yeah, I mean, that's it. Bye guys.